guys welcome back to lion mark tv mark here with another exciting lighting and much interesting video here on the channel so this is actually coming from the burial ceremony of late senator anyogu eze and yes a lot of dignitaries were present for this one former uh, president of the federal republic of nigeria was there former labor party um presidential candidate peter obi was there the list is endless uh, present leaders in the senate and others were all present at this one the burial ceremony took place in enugu where they had a service of song pastor jerry Eze um, gave a very powerful sermon from that one senator abaribe gave a nice and amazing speech which you'll be listening to here enjoy don't forget to subscribe drop a comment Excellency, former president, good luck, Jonathan, and my brother, the deputy speaker. Your excellencies, former governors, members of the upper chamber, the senate, and members of the house, and especially our colleagues from the 6th and 7th Senate, ladies and gentlemen. I'm speaking on behalf of the Southeast Caucus of the National Assembly. Ayogeze was our member, and indeed, he was, at the time he was in the Senate, the secretary of the Southeast Caucus, and was one of those who moved that caucus at the very testy time. I remember that uh, as we were transiting from the sixth Senate to the seventh Senate, David Mack, who was the president of the Senate of the Sixth, had been endorsed by all the people from the North Central Zone. And so, a whole lot of people were coming to tell Ayogweze that he should run for the office of the deputy Senate president. They came to me also, they came to a few of us, and we remembered what happened under President Obasanjo when the president of the Senate was moving from one state to the other. So Ayogo called me and said, we have to have our own meeting, and we have to come out with our own communique that our friend who incidentally we know is not here with us, Ike Kuremado, that in the same way that North Central has endorsed David Ma, we're also going to endorse our friend Ike Kuremado. And that doused everything about us in the Southeast always being seen as stabbing each other in the back. Ayogo was such a man who at all times, he will walk with you, and when he says that he's with you, he's always with you. I took over from him as the spokesman of the Senate in the seventh. He was in the sixth. And I'm not so sure that the vibrancy that you were seeing at that time, that you are seeing it again at uh, this time. A short while ago, we were all with him, just like um, Chuka Otazi said, in the daughter's wedding. And thereafter, he fell sick. I went to see him in the hospital and I shed tears because he couldn't talk. He was just looking at me and I was looking at him. 
I held his hand and it was like, so this is how man will eventually end up. So Pastor Jerry, I thank you for your wonderful exhortation today. I've heard about you so much. And uh, all I need to say in closing is that we, the Igbo, we have a way of venerating death. And so in Igbo land, you will see so many names that concern death to show you how the Igbo look at death. And one of the names that they give to Igbos is on Ebuaha. In other words, death will never remove the name of a great man. Ayogo is a great man, and this death will not remove his name. I want to ask the family continue to take heart. We will continue to be with you always, and we pray to God that as he's giving you comfort, let him also comfort the rest of us who are here because of Ayogo. Eze. May God continue to accept his soul into his bosom in Jesus' name. Thank you, distinguished Senator Baribe, Chairman Senate Committee on Power. Permit me to recognize the presence in our midst of the Deputy Minority Whip, Honorable George Ozodinobi. You're welcome. It's also my pleasure to introduce in our midst Lady Josephine Weze, Managing Director, Chief Executive, News Engineering. And also we have in our midst another great amazing, Mrs. Nkechimba, Executive Director, Corporate Services, Niger Delta Power Holding Company. And also in our midst is the Dean Postgraduate School, Bayes University, Professor Biodung Adeni, who was a colleague of uh, the late distinguished Senator Ayogo. Please put your hands together for these ones. Just for a little interlude, may I invite to Minister Ross, Minister Chiwendo Ode, and her team. If you're ready, if not, I would then. Thank you very much, ma'am. You are welcome. Please put your hands together for Minister Chingwendu Odi and her team. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In all things, we give God praise. Hallelujah. I pray that as we minister, you will be edified and God will be glorified in Jesus' name. Fading away like the stars of the morning losing their light in the glorious sun thus would we pass from the earth and its toiling only remembered by what only remembered, only remembered, only remembered by what we have done. Thus we will pass from the earth and its toiling. Only. 
together again for Minister Chimwendu Odi and her team. My distinguished pleasure now to invite to speak a former executive governor of Enugu State, Dr. Opwesileze Ngodo. As it comes, it's my, also my pleasure to indicate that we have in our midst the topmost uh, public servant, retired public servant, Ambassador God Knows Egali. Please put your hands together for him. Your Excellency, former President Goodluck Jonathan, the Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, His Excellency Right Honorable Benjamin Carlo. Your Excellencies, distinguished senators, honorable members of the House of Assembly, House of Representatives, former ministers, the distinguished family of Senator Ayogweze. Ladies and gentlemen, um, for those who know my relationship with Iowa, you know that coming up here to make this testimony is a very difficult one for me. Iowa called me father. And in our place, our prayer is that our children will bury us and not that we bury our children. For me to be part of an event to bury Ayogweze is a very difficult one for me. I became very close to Ayogweze when my elder brother, late Dr. Jumud, was running for governor of the then Anambra State. I came all the way from Lagos, where he was working for Newswatch magazine, every weekend to join us in the campaign. My brother was then running for governor of Anambra State. Somewhere along the line, Enugu State was created out of Anambra. And after my brother had won the primary, he was disqualified with his, close, with his closest contender, Reverend Hyde Ono Aguluchi. And that's how I stepped into the shoe of my brother and was subsequently elected the first executive governor of Enugu State. Now, one of the first appointments I made as governor was to appoint Ayogo as my special assistant. And while he walked with me, I became very close to his family. If I had any issue with his father, his father would come to my house and summon Ayogo and we iron it out there. The same with his mother. So I was very much involved in his personal life as he was involved in my government. Now, I can tell you, Senator Ayogese is an extremely brilliant man. Very brilliant. Ayog was the last person I saw before I went to bed as governor. He was the first person I saw when I got up. Because I had to share my last thoughts with him. And in the morning, because at that time, not now that everybody can type and uh, do sorts of things on the internet. I was one of the few people who could operate a computer at that time. In the morning, my speech was typed and printed. 
My program for the day was typed and printed. And, you know, when you have a staff who does not stop at your instruction, but continues beyond your instruction to your amazement, that was Iog. He became so close that it was difficult for me to operate without Iog. At some point, I made a circular saying that my commissioners and my advisors should clear with Iog. And if he has not solved their problem, he will recommend you to see me. Now, some of these commissioners were, in fact, most of them were older than I was. I was very young at that time. And some of them had been commissioners before, like Clay to Sopata. So they rose up in arms that why should they go to this young man to uh, look at what they were doing in their ministry and uh, see whether they should see the governor. Anyway, we struck a truce. But that is how much, how much work he took off my table. And uh, if he was not that intelligent and committed to what we were doing, I don't think I would have given him such responsibility. Because he joined us in the campaign. He knew what we wanted to achieve in government. He shared the vision. And he was driving it as much as I could drive it. His loyalty was Catholic. You knew where you were with Iogo at any time. So I was not surprised at all that future governments in Enugu found him as useful as I did. And he rose from commissioner in one ministry to another ministry until he came up to Abuja as a senator. You have heard the testimonies of the senators who work with him. You know, <laughs> a Bedike is, is, is a phenomenon. If he enters a room, his presence must be recognized. You either recognize him for his height, you either recognize him for his charisma, or you recognize him for his eloquence. But he was captivating. And because he had the gift of the gap, and he was intelligent, he will arrest any audience. Because he will talk sense, and he had the language. So, what we are hearing tonight, and what you will read in many tributes, when you get the biography, and the, the, the tributes uh, that have been written there, you will come to see that we are here tonight to eulogize a man who deserves every word that anybody comes up here to say about him. He died in active service. You heard the chairman of the raw material, I mean, uh, of the Revenue and Location and Fiscal Commission. So I will serve our state diligently. He served the country diligently. He died in active service. He paid his dues. And I want this to be a consolation to the family. I visited with him a number of times in the hospital. I held his hand and we prayed that God will heal him soon. But at the end, God knows best. Because it's not how long we live, but it's how well we live. Ayog is being celebrated because of what he did for God and humanity. Nobody is just singing his praise for the sake of singing his praise. So the family, you should be consoled. Your father was a great man. He came, he saw, he conquered, 
and God took him when God wanted to take him because God gave him to us in the first place. So I want to thank each and every one of you, especially our former president. I know how many times we came to harass you when we wanted Ayog to be our governor <laughs> and all of that. Um, and your normal patience and uh, advice. So I want to thank each and every one of you who has come here to honor my son. And I believe that my prayer for each one here today is that when you find yourself in this situation, people will come and honor you the way you have come to honor Ayo Gweze tonight. Thank you so much, and God bless each and every one of you. Your Excellency, Dr. Okwesileze Ngudu, the one who said the crown fits. He, he did mention that of how intelligent, uh, distinguished, bereaved, a demise senator was. And he didn't say that this intelligence is also attributable to his profession, the journalism profession. He was there as a senior editor of Newswatch before he called him to become his special assistant. And uh, so permit me to now say that he rests, actually. God healed him because he now rests. It is my distinguished pleasure now to welcome to speak the Deputy Speaker of the House of Reps, the Right Honorable Benjamin Carlo. Put your hands together for him. Your Excellency, the former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, our very own President Goodluck, Ebele Jonathan, a man in whom we are well pleased. It's good to see you again your humility and your patience. My pastor, I celebrate you because of what you represent. Today, you were able to remind us that there is wisdom in the house of mourning. If there's anything to leave here with today is that appraisal. Beyond the fame, the wealth. Beyond all these big networks that we have, the day comes when they will matter less. It's good to have you here today. The family of the great man we are celebrating today. Please permit me to stand on the existing protocol. I know the list is much, and the great men that I re respect a lot are all seated here. I will approach my tribute from a different perspective. Now we'll start that tribute by celebrating those who are alive. One of them is the man that just spoke. If I was called up, Obusileze Mwodo. I want to celebrate you because in a time like this when many find it difficult to raise others, to mentor others, especially in Igbo land where we come from. 
Because they are afraid they will be bigger than them. You stood by the man you called your son from his birth in politics till he achieved the greatest height. And you are here standing today testifying that he was a man of integrity. Only few men like you are still alive. I will pray that God will preserve you and men like you. It's only character and integrity that will make a man leave Lagos and come steadily every weekend to support a cause he believed in. Only character will make a man be the first to be seen by a governor and the last to be seen by a governor. He must have been very good. Only character define that relationship, not the wealth in his pocket, not just the wisdom that you describe, but what you choose that held you close to him was his character. He never betrayed you. He stood by you. To the extent that after serving you, you were longing for him to become the governor you were. Only character and integrity. And that is what is missing these days among politicians. No more integrity. It's all about self. No more character. It's all about wealth. The house of mourning is the house of wisdom. If nothing matters to you, let it be that the lessons that you take from here today will help you be better than the man that we are celebrating. Children of this great man, man, be consoled. Your father is being defined well. As a man of character, as a man of integrity. May that inspire you to be greater than him. If nothing inspires you, let the wardens of this great man. They are no mean men. They have come. They have conquered. They are now watching the shining light of their trophies. And if they could stand here and say, people like Engineer Abaribe, my senior brother, Senator, who says is the way it is. If he stays here and say, your father was a man of integrity. Believe me, he was a man of integrity. Because if he wasn't, Engineer Abaribe would not identify with him. Because himself stands for what is right. And nothing but what is right. I did not relate so much with him personally when he was alive. But I monitored his progress. And he inspired me. And I became somehow like him. I'll tell you how. When he spoke with eloquence, when he became a chairman of a committee as a first-timer, I knew it was possible to be done. When he became the spokesperson of the, of the Senate, I told myself that that was doable. And that was why when I got to the House of Representatives as a first-timer, I became like Anyo Goeze, the spokesperson of the House of Representatives. If that is not motivation and inspiration, I wonder what is. So you see, your father was making marks without even knowing those he was impacting on. Be happy. I watched your father walk as a chairman of the Works Committee. I watched your father walk as a member of the Constitution Review Committee, he made several contributions the eight years he spent in the Senate. 
to the amendment of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He contributed. And I told myself to make impact in Nigeria. Legislative intervention, especially with regards to the ground norm, was important. The first time I couldn't work in the Constitution Review Committee. But guess what? I did not leave my dream of being like your father, who contributed from the Southeast in the Constitution Review Committee. Your guess is as good as mine. Today, I'm the chairman of the Constitution Review Committee in the House of Representatives. I say so because we don't even know who we influence by the way we live. The house of mourning is the house of wisdom. When you live today, remember that there are many watching you who may not speak to you for once. But you are impacting positively in their life. Who are you impacting? Who are you influencing? It's not about money. Money doesn't impact anymore. It doesn't influence anymore. We've seen that. We've seen fame. We've seen big positions. We are looking for character. We are looking for main of integrity. It's not your post that will inspire us. It's the character. It's your integrity. I saw you weeping, young lady. Even though you had the power of eloquence of your father. May your tears touch me, but weep no more. Your father left behind what will outlive him. I bring you greetings from the House of Representatives. And it is with a heavy heart that we gather today to remember a tribute to this remarkable Nigerian, Senator Ayog Eze. Senator Eze was a respected leader and a man of immense character. His dedication to public service was unparalleled. Throughout his distinguished career, Senator Eze championed the causes of his constituents and our nation with utmost devotion. For the eight years he spent in the Senate, he was a member of the Constitution Drafting Amendment Committee, and made some novel changes to the Nigerian's 1999 Constitution. He was also the chairman of the Senate Committee on Works. Furthermore, his commitment to deepening Nigeria's democracy leaves a lasting legacy that will continue to benefit Nigerians for years to come. All these beautiful lines are for your daddy, coming from the House of Representatives. Beyond his political accomplishments, Senator Eze was a man of great warmth and great kindness. He was genuinely able to connect with people from all walks of life. During the wedding ceremony, he sent me a couple of messages, but unfortunately I was outside the country. He followed up back to back, and I missed the fact that I was not there. But I will come for your child dedication. Because it's about reincarnating, if there is anything like that. He will be deeply missed, not only for his sharp intellect and political acumen, but also for his jovial spirit and infectious laughter. To the Eze family, I can only imagine the depths of your grief. I can only imagine, especially when I remember the wardens of the wife the day I visited. And I quote, I was nobody until he found me. He lifted me from nothing to something. He raised my kids the same way he raised me. It is painful. He couldn't wait for the children to say thank you. Those were the words of a good woman who, though the husband was gone, remembered the impact that he made. The last wording of those prayers touched me and still does. He couldn't wait for me to say thank you.
please know that an adventurous person leaves a void, not only in your heart, not only in Enugu, but the entire Southeast, entire Nigeria, and in the hearts of some of us who love you and who loved him. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Your Excellency, the Deputy Speaker, Federal House of Representatives, Right Honorable Benjamin Carlo. It's my pleasure also to welcome in our midst the Deputy Inspector General of Police. I couldn't miss him because he's also a colleague in the profession, the PEM profession. DIG Frank Mbai is here with us. Thank you so much. We also have Mr. Chinya Kauha, former permanent secretary of FCT in Ministry of Power. He had sway there. He's here with us. Chief Everestos Naji Odengene is here with us. Mr. K. Tani, former deputy governor of Enugu State, here with us. Senator Gebat Naji, Honorable Buefi Ozombachi, and the Right Honorable Jones Onyere. He has been here since this event started at 5 p.m., but that's in his character. A perfect gentleman, the former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, permit me to invite to speak, finally, His Excellency, Dr. Goodluck Ebele Chupu Jonathan, JCFR. Thank, thank you so much. Please be seated. Uh, please be seated. The Right Honorable Deputy Speaker, thank you, and thank you for that your beautiful speech. Uh, members of the National Assembly here with us serving, and those who have served that are still very strong and here, here with us. The Honorable Minister of Science and Technology, other senior functionaries of government are here with us. Let me especially appreciate Jerry Eze, the founder of uh, Streams of uh, Joy International, and thank you for your message. The wife and members of the bereaved family of our good friend Ayog Eze, the very young children that are here with us, my brothers and sisters. In fact, we have listened to a series of tributes his colleagues and friends have spoken. We heard from the family through the daughter and two people that he worked under, the chairman of the Revenue Mobilization and Location and Fiscal Commission, and of course my own chairman of P former chairman of PDP, His Excellency, that was also the for former governor of uh, Enugu State, Thank you for your beautiful speech. I may not want to bore your ears again because I will listen, deep, listen to very poetic tributes, and most of them come from journalists like him. I have to thank them, and listening through, you really know who our late friend, our late brother, our late father was. I knew Ayogweze from when I came as a vice president. That was during the sixth Senate. And that is when he also joined the National Assembly. Of course, later on now, I, when I became a president. Of course, as a vice president, I didn't know much about him. But it was when I became a president that we started interacting. Himself and some senators, including Senator Emmanuel Polka from Bielsa State, they were very useful to me. Whenever there are issues, they will come. They wouldn't want me to have collision with the National Assembly, and they will always bring suggestions. Yes, members of National Assembly used to visit presidents for different reasons. Some would come to seek for favors. But Ayogwezi came to see me with Senator Polk and a few others in several locations, and they, were, they didn't come to see me because they wanted favor for themselves or for anybody close to them. But they wanted to assist me in terms of suggestion, how to handle certain things. 
so that there will be peace in the country and there will be no friction between me and the National Assembly. So the descriptions given here are correct. In most cases, when somebody dies, of course, eulogies must be positive. People will create stories, positive stories, for the purpose of burying the dead. But what we've heard this evening, they are not created for the purpose of burying Senator Aisley. It depicts who he was. He was a nice person. It's unfortunate that, like some people say, that it appears good people don't live too long. The Bible talks about three scores plus ten, and he has even denied us that three scores plus ten. It's only 65, not even the 70. That appears to be the minimum matured age looking through the scriptures. But just like one of uh, the songs that was raised here, fading away like a star of the morning, all what we leave behind is uh, the key thing. And everybody who spoke, almost everybody mentioned that. It's not how long we live. But the little time you stayed on earth, what will people remember you for? In most cases, when you remember our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, how long did he live? And he has impacted life and still impacting life till today. So it's not living the life of Methuselah that matters. But if God gave you 30, 40, 50 years, 60 years, what did you use that period for? He used it very well. And I join all others, especially the deputy speaker who spoke before me, to console the family. And say, yes, you have lost your father. We're still young and vibrant. But he was a good man. He's impacted life. And God will give you the fortitude to bear the loss. The doors that he would have opened for you, God will provide human beings that will open windows for you. For the pastor, we thank you for coming yourself to preside over this ceremony. Continue to pray for the family. And on behalf of my foundation, that uh, uh, his younger brother works with us, Eze, Eke Sukweje, will say, accept our condolence. Thank you all. Thank you, Your Excellency. You can do better. Your His Excellency, the former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Dr. Goodluck Belichupu Jonathan, GCFR. <laughs>